In Quran, God says in chapter 5, verse 3, Al Yawma, Akman to Lakum Dina, Wa Akman to Alekum Nelmati, Wa Raday to Lakum Islam Dina. That this day have I perfected for you my religion. And I have completed my favors upon you, and I have chosen Islam for you as a religion complete before he died. Again, we say, Muhammad faith in that shoe. Now, that prophecy would be, did the children of Israel, Israelites, expect a prophet to come? Yes, they expected a prophet to come. In the book of John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 19, when John the Baptist appeared, when he surfaced and he started preaching, preparing the ground for the coming advent of Jesus, and he was baptizing people, teachers of the law among Jewish were so worried. So they sent a delegation from Jerusalem to have a meeting with John the Baptist, Yahya. When they arrived, they asked him three questions because these were their expectations. They asked him, are you Elijah? He said, no, I'm not Elijah. Okay? Are you the Messiah? He said, I'm not. They asked him, are you the prophet? Are you Elijah? He said, no. Are you Messiah? He said, no. Are you the prophet? The prophet. Connect the prophet with I will raise, I will raise up for them a prophet like you. So he said, no, 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 no. Then of course the verse continues. He came to prepare the ground for Jesus. As I said, whenever a prophet came, he had to clear the way for the coming prophet. And he had to confirm the previous message. What do we learn from this? How do we analyze this? One, that Israelites expected these three personalities to come before the end of the world. Now, did all of them come in the time of Jesus? That is the question. So let us look at whether Elijah came or not. Anyone with Bible, you can open. Matthew chapter 17 from verse 10 to 11. You will find that Elijah came back. But he came in the form or spirit of Elijah. This is what Bible says. He came back. He confirmed it. Matthew chapter 17, verse 10 to 11 and 12. He came back. What about Messiah? Did he come? Yes, he came. Where do we find this? Book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1. Book of John, chapter 17, verse, verse 3. Matthew 1, 1 reads, This is the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. Jesus Christ, from Christus, from Messiah. So the Messiah came. John, chapter 17, verse 3. Read, and this is the eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. Jesus Christ, Messiah. So these two personalities came. <coughs> Elijah came in the spirit of, of, of uh, John the Baptist, and Messiah came, Jesus. And for your information, Muslim knows this, and our uh, Christian neighbors and friends, Quran mentioned Jesus not less than 25 times by name. But Muhammad is only mentioned by name five times. Does it mean that we are anti Jesus? Somebody may say, no, 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 you just paste, cut and paste his names there. But you really don't believe in him. I said in the beginning of my talk that if you don't believe in Jesus, you are not a Muslim. If you don't believe in Moses, you are not a Muslim. So if salvation is found through Jesus, then I think I'm in paradise. 
I mean, I'm there. I can see myself there. If God wills. If salvation is to be attained through Moses, then I'm already in. Second, you know, flow, I'm there. I mean, if salvation is to be attained through all prophets, this is what my faith dictates, that I have to believe in all the prophets. Not only this, all the revelations that were sent before us, we believe in them. Revelations which were sent before us, we believe in them. Prophets, we believe in them. So I believe in Jesus, and Jesus occupies 25 plots, big lots in Quran. Muhammad occupies five by name. They expected Elijah to come, he came. They expected Messiah to come. Where is the prophet? So it becomes very difficult for any theologian to try to say, no, no, the prophet was Jesus. We Muslims know Jesus is the prophet. He's a messenger. And as I said, one of the leaders in the house of prophethood. But these three questions really put everything in its place. Elijah came, Messiah came, where is the prophet? Because God promised before the birth of Jesus. We may say, but prophethood had to remain among Israelites. This may be an argument. And God didn't need to send a prophet from any other nation or other tribe. Listen to the verse. Book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 42 to 43. Matthew, chapter 21, verse 21 to 20, uh, 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 chapter 21, verse 42 to 43. Remember when Jesus told them about the neglected or rejected stone and telling them that this stone has become the most important what? Cornerstone of the house. Now, we Muslims have something to say about the stone. What do we say about the stone? Muhammad gave an example of a house built by the previous prophets. This one came and laid a brick, and another one came and laid three bricks, and another one four bricks. And what happened after that? People passed by this house, and they said, wow. In America, we say, what we say, amazing, right? They say, look at this beautiful machine, this beautiful, you know, palace. But they say that uh, there is one place, one space for a brick. I, we wish if this builder could fix that house, that, that brick, then this, this house would be complete. The Prophet Muhammad said, I am that brick. La Nabi Ba'di, there will be no prophet after me. Anyone, the only one who claimed to be that brick which was rejected was Prophet Muhammad. When Jesus said these words, Muhammad came to you and said, I'm that brick. Do we believe in it? Yes, we believe in it. Because it was said by Jesus and Muhammad confirmed that it's me. Now back to 21, 43, listen to the verse. Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. And I say to you, no, I say to you, it is, I say to you, the kingdom will be taken from you, the kingdom will be taken from you and given to a nation that beareth the, the, the fruits out of it. So God told them that this kingdom that you are seeing today will definitely be removed from you and it will be given to another nation. The verse is with you. Matthew chapter 21, verse 42 to 43. If this statement is true, then we need to go to another step of agreeing that here is the nation of Islam. Here is Muslim community in the world. Here we are. You can see how Islam is progressing and how the number is increasing the nation that beareth the fruit. Now, I don't mean to say 
growing by terrorism. No, 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 no. This is what I have, not a bomb. For you are safe in this room. We don't condone terrorism, whether done by a Jew or a Christian or a Hindu, terrorism is out. If you believe in God, one word, I don't support terrorism. Islam is growing. Question remains, and this will, I will conclude my talk with this. We haven't found the prophet yet. We found Jesus Messiah, we found Elijah, but where is the prophet? So Jesus what? He conveyed the guidance and light of God to children of Israel. And before he left, he said the following words in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 7. He told them, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I, Jesus, go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come. If I was in America, I would have said, if I was born in America, I would have said, for if I do not go away, the helper is not going to come. Right? Ghana. Right. But you know, the African colonized by British, Right? So they left me with African, you know, I'm hanging between African accent and British, I'm really trying here. <laughs> you know. Right? But they left us with a lot of good things, British. I'm telling you. They left us with a lot of good things. Out of, there are some bad things as well. But, colony is colony, right? Just like they colonized America, right? These are heroes, we have to salute them. They colonized mighty America. Anyway, no politics. <laughs> Jesus said that it is for your own advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come. But if I go away, I will send him to you. We need to continue with the verse. I want to analyze this quickly because of time. Jesus made the coming, the advent of another one under the name of Paraclete. Parakletos in, 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 in Greek, a helper, a comforter, a, a distinguisher between false and right, you know, any, any translation that we give and any meaning that we give. But he said that condition is that helper cannot come and reign with his presence. So he has to leave. Question. Who is this? Christian hold. They say that this is none else but Holy Spirit, because as you read, you will find the, the word, the Spirit of Truth. And also in the book of John, before this, chapter 14, you find again the word Holy Spirit, the, the, the Spirit of Truth is mentioned. Let us analyze that. Question. If the Holy Spirit was meant in this verse, then we raise a lot of questions. One. Biblical history shows that the Holy Spirit has been existing before the birth of Jesus. From Genesis verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1, and the, the Spirit of God was on war. Right? David fighting against Goliath, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was filled, and he threw the stone, and Goliath was... was you can imagine an attack of the British bulldog of, the, of those days. And, and uh, John, uh, who is the latest? John Cena. Of those days who thought that he would bully and crush everybody. He was filled with Holy Spirit. History of Holy Spirit. Let me come to a specialist of, of Holy Spirit in the Bible. In New Testament. I call him, this is my own. A, spe a specialist of Holy Spirit. Mr. Luke, Dr. Luke, physician. He says in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 15, it was predicted that Elizabeth 
will definitely conceive and the child would be with the Holy Spirit in her womb. <coughs> At that time, Jesus was not yet born. In the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 41, it says, And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 67, And Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit. In the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 25, there was a righteous man called Simeon. He was waiting for the advent, advent of Jesus. He was also filled with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has been on earth. Holy Spirit has been filling people. So again, why should Jesus say that, look, 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 here's the condition. It's expedient for you that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come. The helper, if he meant Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit was already here. And one of the best examples that closes this chapter is the same book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 22. Remember the verses. I quoted almost five, six verses. Luke, chapter 1, verse 15. Luke, chapter 1, verse 41. Luke, chapter 1, verse 67. Luke, Chapter 2, verse 25. Look, I'm quoting now chapter 3, verse 21 to 23. It says, When all were baptized, and after Jesus had, had been baptized by John in River Jordan, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, and my words, the heaven opened. And a voice came from the heaven saying, you are my beloved son. You are my son with whom I'm, I'm beloved, I'm pleased. And the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in the form of a dove. Again, Jesus is here. He is guided by Spirit. Now, please. If the Holy Spirit was meant in the verse, how comes that the Holy Spirit is already with Jesus? Argument remains. Okay, that is why Jesus said that since it's with me, I have to leave, then I will send him. This is the argument. I say that the argument doesn't hold water. Why? Because in the book of John, chapter 20, verse 19, 20 to 21, Jesus appeared to his disciples and greeted them as salamu alaykum. May peace of God be with you. As God sent me, I send you. As God sent me, I send you. And then he breathed into them. He breathed into them and told them, Ye receive ye the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus left, Holy Spirit dwelt among his disciples. So again, if what was meant in the verse was the Holy Spirit, how comes that Jesus had already officially, officially, officially left the Holy Spirit in this world? We are still looking for the prophet. So for us to conclude who is the prophet, we need to analyze the rest of the verses under the same subject. So then Jesus says, when he comes, he will convict the world of sin Righteousness and judgment. Who did that? Holy Spirit doing that? From the time Jesus left, we know that crime and evil and vices has increased more than before. Because few people believed in Jesus. They didn't want to understand what he said. Jesus was so sincere. Calling them every name sometimes, you snakes and you serpents and some serpents, because they, they were hot headed. Muhammad came. What happened after that? So somebody may say, but look at all the killings in the Middle East. They are coming there. Coming there. Question is when Muhammad came, God told him, well, that you are the best nation. 
أخرجت للناس إبا إفولف فمن كانت تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله you enjoy good and all that which is righteous and you forbid the evil and you believe in Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded Prophet Muhammad of what he told Jewish and he told him وَأَنِحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ and judge between them by that which Allah has revealed he fits in this shoe convicting the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment Jesus then told them I have many things to tell you but you cannot bear them now but when he, comma, in any bible he, comma, the spirit of truth comes he will lead you into all the truth So the spirit of truth is mentioned here. History of prophets. Whenever God appointed them, he appointed men, but then he supported them with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it was never a problem for Jesus telling them that when he, the spirit of truth comes, any history of Jesus himself, Holy Spirit descending on him. Right? Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit. John was filled with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus didn't have to say a man and then a Holy Spirit. No, he would say a prophet. Or he would say the spirit of truth. It makes more sense. Because this is what has been happening. Anybody who claims to have been possessed or to have, you know, to, 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 to have had Holy Spirit, he, was, he had it. Prophets. God sent spirit to support them, Holy Spirit. So again, he will lead you into all the truth. Did Muhammad meet that? Yes. Jesus said that I have many things to tell you. You cannot bear them now. Okay. You cannot bear them now. But Muhammad came and he conveyed all that he was told to convey just as uh, prophesized in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18. I beg Mr. Chairman to give me three more minutes. He writes, time is up. <laughs> <laughs> Just three more minutes, sir. Three and five, right? <clears throat> now, conclusion is this. Maybe we are not yet satisfied because uh, he will lead you to all the truth. In the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Quran that Quran is the truth, the whole truth. And the message sent to Prophet Muhammad, God told him, rabbikum, and speak the whole truth from your Lord. Whoever wills will reject, and whoever wills will receive it. Which means there is no compulsion in religion. Don't force people into faith. La ikraha fitin. But Muhammad conveyed all that he led the whole world into all the truth. How? We have a lot of problems that we are going through now. In America, recession. Do you know what has been happening in the streets outside here? Demonstrations against what? You call it Wall Street? No, not Wall Street. Starvation. Hunger. Suffering. I want a solution brought by Holy Spirit. But in Islam, I say Muhammad was told, First solution. That Allah has permitted business transaction, trades is allowed, but Allah, God the Almighty, has forbidden strictly what is called interest and usury. Most of us here, found themselves swinging in this deep sea because of interest. Right or not? The credit card that you have in your pocket here is choking your neck now. They tell you, don't worry. Don't worry. Just, you know, you are, you are qualified to that uh, Lexus. And you are qualified to that beautiful house on the mountain. You just sign, just pay 3,000 down payment. And you say, wow, American dream. What American dream? It has become American uh, nightmare. 
not American dream anymore. So we say we have a solution. What about alcohol? Is it a problem or not? Intoxicants, is it a problem or not? Drugs from Mexico and I mean, is it a problem or not? Quran is the only book that says Fajitan inna mal khamru wal maisir and the verse continues then it says Fajitan ibuhu la alla kum tuflihun Verily intox intoxicants and gambling and it continues then Allah says this is a handiwork of Satan so avoid it completely that you may succeed How can a drunkard community succeed? You are a manager working at my farm and you are like this Keep you out, get out. <laughs> Look, women have been used as if they are tools. I mean, if they want to advertise a car, what happened? They will never ever bring Brother Hussam with his beard. <laughs> Hussam's beard, you will lose customers with Hussam's beard on you. But they choose this young girl and they strip her off and they tell her now stand right there with me see through. You want to understand the car? You can understand me. Ah, so now what happens? Adultery and fornication. Christians, Holy Spirit solution. I want solution. I want the solution because Jesus says when, the, when he comes, the helper, he will lead you into all the truth. I want solution. People have gone beyond adultery and fornication. We have gays. And then we have lesbians. And I think now some women feels like they don't need these husbands cannot help them. So now we are trying to make a relationship with dogs and animals. Did Moses agree with that? Christians, Jewish, if you are here. Did Jesus agree with that? Moses is told in the book of Deuteronomy, do not commit adultery. Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 27, you have been told do not commit adultery. But I'm telling you that any man who looks at a woman and desires, he has already committed, I mean, adultery with her. How comes that immoralities are increasing? Muhammad came with a message to solve this problem. He will lead you into all the truth. Walata karabu zina. Nor come closer to adultery and fornication. In Nabukana fahisha tawasaka sabila. For it is evil and it leads to bad way. AIDS, gonorrhea, syphilis. What do you say? Therefore, if you ask of any major problem today, I say that Muhammad led us into all the truth. He will also, Jesus said, he will glorify me. Did Muhammad glorify Jesus? Yes. Quran chapter 3, Quran chapter 19. And you remember when angels said, Ya Maryam, O Mary, inna Allah yubashiruki bi kalimatin minu. Verily God is giving you a glad tiding of a word from him. Ismuhul Masih Isa ibn Maryam. His name is Jesus, son of Mary. Wajihan fi dunya wal akhira held in honor, in honor, in this world and tomorrow hereafter, wamin al muqarrabin and this Jesus will be among the closest to God. Did we honor Jesus? Muhammad honored Jesus. Respected brothers and sisters, as I say, time is not enough and I've gone beyond time. I conclude with the following verse without any explanation, if there will be questions. Quran chapter 61 verse 6, uh, verse 6. Quran chapter 61 verse 6 where Allah what the Almighty says and remember when Jesus son of Mary said Ya Bani Israel O children of Israel O Israelites Inni Rasulullah ilaykum Verily I Jesus am a messenger of God to you Confirming that which came before me of Torah, of the law. And I give a glad tiding, good news of a prophet who would come after me, whose name is Ahmad and Muhammad, the praised one. 
But when he, Muhammad, came to them with clear signs, they say this is a manifest witchcraft. Thank you very much. We believe that Muhammad was mentioned in the Bible, and this talk was not meant, meant just to convert you. It was meant to improve our understanding that we are sailing in the same boat. If you believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus. If you don't believe in Muhammad, I believe in Muhammad. This was just a gift that believe if you don't know, then it is high time that you believe in Muhammad. Wa jazakumullahu khair. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace of God be with you. Thank you, Imam Shafi, for that informative lecture on Muhammad and the Bible. So now we're going to begin our uh, question phase. And we ask that if you have any questions, please come up to uh, this microphone on your right. And please be very brief with your questions. Um, please keep it to questions and not comments, just for the sake of time. And if, just a quick warning, if you do lead off into a comment, we will ask that you please be seated and the next person will um, ask their question. And we also ask the audience to be very respectful during the question and answer time. Our goal of this forum is for healthy discussion and, um, and healthy dialogue. So thank you, and I present again Imam Shafi. If there are no questions, I wonder if you wouldn't mind speaking to, to the audience for another 15 minutes or so. If no one has any questions, I'm sure they'd like to hear from you again. I, I know that I have to leave and I would love to sit and listen to you some more, Aki, but there doesn't seem to be any questions, so I'm just wondering if there aren't any questions, maybe you could talk for another five minutes or so. Shalom. 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 I talk, this is my work. Uh, maybe adding the following under the topic, under the subject. Somebody may ask, what is the importance of Muhammad and the role of Muhammad? Now that we have known, based on our Islamic point of view, that this Muhammad is the prophet which was prophesied according to a few verses that I gave. Question is, was he sent to an Arabs only or he was sent to the rest of the world? So Allah God the Almighty says in Quran, chapter 25, verse 1. Also in Quran, chapter 21, verse 107. Also in Quran, chapter 7, verse 158, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Anbiya, chapter, 20, chapter 21, verse 107, Wama arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen, and we sent you not but as a mercy to the whole world. Muhammad was sent not only to Arabs, that is why I'm a non Arab speaker, I'm addressing you. I think there is a question I need to do justice to myself. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Um, I think my question is, uh, I was just wondering if you could explain a little bit more about, um, you made a lot of uh, comparisons to Muhammad and to um, Moses, and then, um, you know, showing how Jesus was not like either of them. 
And as a follower of Jesus, I just want to um, try to understand more about what you believe about that. Uh, you, from my point of view, it seems that you give a lot of proof as to why Jesus is the Son of God by uh, showing him as, you know, standing out from Muhammad. And um, I just wonder a little bit more about that. And I'd also like to say, just say real quickly, that um, as a follower of Jesus, I do believe that Muhammad was a prophet to Muslims. Um, I don't believe uh, that he was the same kind of prophet that you do, but I do respect you and I do love Muslims, and so thank you for having us here tonight. These are many questions in one. First, elaborating or defining how Jesus is unlike Moses. Jesus is like Moses in many other ways, but examples that I gave are self-explanatory. Jesus was raised, Muhammad and Moses were not raised. Prohibited. Jesus is coming back, Muhammad and Jesus are not coming back. Uh, uh, Muhammad and Moses are not coming back. According to your belief, Jesus was crucified, right? Muhammad and Moses were not crucified. Jesus brought, he came to confirm the law. I believe in that. You believe in that? Moses introduced the new law. Muhammad also introduced the law. Moses was a statesman, not only a prophet, but he led a nation. Muhammad led a nation. Jesus did do that. Not because he, he wasn't able, no, but the time factor and the nature of his mission. Generally, I mentioned these similarities, they are clear. As for many other similarities, we may find many other similarities, but this is a spiritual gathering. So we take what fits, you know, the, 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 the main, you know, objective of the, of the discussion. I think what maybe you wanted to know is our belief regarding Jesus. We Muslims, as I said, is the only non-Christian faith that makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus. We don't just respect Christians, we respect you and we believe in Jesus. In fact, sister, I say during my lecture that if believing in Jesus takes me to heaven, then I'm already in. You remember? Because I cannot be a Muslim, I cannot stand in front of you here without believing in Jesus. So please, I beg you, don't grab Jesus away from me. Okay, don't do that to me. Don't deprive me of Jesus. Another aspect of your question is our belief in Jesus. We Muslims believe in the miraculous birth of Jesus, that he was born without any male intervention. Quran chapter 19, verse 19. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and Gabriel, angel said, told many, Tala inama ana rasulu rabbik li ahabalaki ulama zakiya. One word, one statement seals the deal. An angel told her, told Mary, Virgin Mary, young Mary, that verily I am but a messenger of God. I, angel, have been sent by God to give you a good news of a pure and holy son. This is my belief, not in the Bible, but in Quran. God sent angel Gabriel to give her good news that she would conceive without any male intervention. I believe in that. Secondly, I believe in the work of Jesus, which means we Muslims believe, as mentioned in the first verse, a prophet whom they find written with them in Torah, law given to Moses, and in Jesus, gospel of Jesus. I believe in the books, that Moses was given a book called Torah, Law, Guidance and Light for Children of Israel. I believe that Zabur was given to David. David received a revelation from God. 
I believe that Jesus received a gospel, good news and light and light. As for children of Israel, I believe that Jesus received a book. Therefore, I believe in his work. I believe in the guidance that he had. I believe that he guided people towards righteousness, only that people can be stubborn to reject Jesus. That is not upon him, that is upon him. Another area, I believe in the miracles that God performed through Jesus. I was giving a lecture somewhere in Namibia at the university and I told my audience that do you know that Moses, Jesus or Abraham never performed one miracle? They almost turned my, 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 my talk to a Tahrir Square in Egypt now. <laughs> Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Why do you say that Jesus never performed the miracle? I say I believe in the miracles performed by God through Jesus. Why? Because Jesus says in the book of John, chapter 5, verse 30, also in the book of, book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 20, where in the chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 20, 21 to 22, he said, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. Who performed miracles through Moses? God. Who performed miracles through Jesus? God. We believe in all miracles that Jesus performed by the will and power of God. I believe in that. If miracles takes people to paradise, again, I'm in the third floor. Why? This is clearly stated in Quran. Not only that, there are certain miracles which are not mentioned in the Bible, which are mentioned in Quran. If I am anti-Jesus, why should Muhammad collect all this to support what? Republican will never ever say one good thing that favors what? Democrats. Understand it in that context. Never. So why should Muhammad be told, Walad al a pure son, why should Muhammad be told that Jesus was conceived without any male intervention? Why should Muhammad be told that Jesus performed many miracles by the power and will of God? Listen to this miracle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa nasa fil mahdi wa kahra. That Jesus, once he is born, he will address people in the cradle, in the cradle. And when he is a grown up, at puberty, is that written in the Bible? No. That Jesus addressed people in the cradle? No. But in Quran, that is addressed. It is addressed in Quran. Which means he, when the angel Gabriela came to Mary, there was a discussion trying to bargain. There was, there was a bargaining between angel Gabriel and, and, and Mary. God has sent me. She, Mary was, sit, was, was staying in a, in a secluded place, worshiping God, because she was that pious. We Muslims agree. We believe in that. So one day she saw a man walking towards her. You know what she said? Khalat inni a'udhu bil rahmani mink in kunta That I fear God. May God protect me from your evil, you man, you stranger. If you fear God, keep away from me. Angel Gabriel told her, Kala inna ma'ana rasulu rabbi, li aha balaki gulama zakiya. I'm not a normal man, but I'm a messenger of God, sent to give you a good news of a pure son, Jesus. Mary said, Kala, anna yakunu li gulama. How shall I have a son? Walam yamsasni basho. Yet no man has touched me, a man touching me. Walam aku bagiya, and I'm not a chaste woman, I'm not a prostitute. Angel Gabriel told her that you are God, if this is how, what your God has decreed. And this is how he decreed it. And when he wants something or he decrees something, he tells it be and it is. I believe in that. So now the child, Mary left, you know, the, the Jerusalem. She went outside of the Jerusalem and she gave back to this child. Now Mary is asking God, my people knew of me that I'm, I'm, I'm clean, I'm pure. I don't commit adultery in these fornications. With this child, what am I going to tell my people? They're definitely going to slander me and accuse me. God told her, if you see any man, فَقُولِ إِنِّي نَذَبْتُ لِلْرَحْمَنِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيًّا 
I have vowed to fast and I'm not going to talk to anybody. So many came holding a child to have family. Immediately when they saw her, they said, Ya ukhta Haruna, ma kana abu kimra asawin wa ma kana tumu kibariya. That you are, your mother or your father were not unchaste. Your father was never evil and your mother was never unchaste. Where did you bring this from? They are accusing him. Fa'asharat ilayhi, listen to this miracle recorded in the Quran. She pointed to the child. Qalu, they said, Kaifa nukallimu man kana fil mahdi sabiyya. How do you expect us to address a child who is still in the cradle? But the child spoke. Qala, Jesus spoke in the cradle, Ibni Abdullah. I'm a servant of God. Atani al-Kitab. He has bestowed on me a book. He has given me a book of guidance. Waja'alani nabiyya. And he made me his prophet. Waja'alani mubarakan ayna ma kuntu. And he made me blessed. Me, Jesus, blessed wherever I am. Wa uswani bi salati wa zakati ma duntu hayya. And God has enjoined on me prayers and fasting as long as I live. وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي And God has enjoyed and has, has, has commanded me to, to obey my parent, to be obedient to my parent, and he, he, God, never made me root and stab. And my peace of God be upon me when I was born, when I live, and the time I will die. Do I believe in Jesus? Yes, I believe in this. And then I believe that he was raised, Jesus. I believe that Jesus is coming back. This is my belief in Jesus. Sister, if I don't believe in Jesus, I'm not a Muslim. So I am more closer to you than you are heart. Thank you very much. Uh, question about uh, the word "peliquil." I can't pronounce it. It was, I guess, a Greek word. <laughs> and uh, there's all there's some debate behind that. Can you explain that a little bit? And then the uh, second part would be: What about Acts? Acts in the Bible. If you could explain a little bit about that. What is the, your first question? You <laughs> mentioned something and you said you cannot pronounce it. <laughs> no? so, uh, this uh, Parakletes or Parakletos, you know, this is a Greek word. This is a Greek word which has been translated according to different versions of the Bible. Other says it means a comforter. Other says a helper, other says, you know, a distinguisher between false and it meant someone who was being prophesied by Jesus to come. And as I said, of course, Christians, and they have every right, you know, to stick to that, that you know they believe it's the Holy Spirit. But we Muslims believe that somebody who had to come, someone who had to come to talk to people like me and you was a human being led by the Spirit. This is what we believe. In the history, in the history of prophethood, God appointed them and God supported them with spirit. For example, in Quran, Allah says, Tilka Rusul, Fadalna Badahum Ala Badin, Minhum Man Kalam Allah, Warafa Badahum Daraja, Wa Ataina Isa Abn Marim Al Bayinat, Wa Ayyadina Mubiru Il Kudus. He gave Jesus clear signs, but then he supported him with the Holy Spirit. Same thing that happened happened with Moses and other prophets. Maybe another time we need to discuss who is Holy Spirit, because according to Christianity, Holy Spirit has many other meanings. We Muslims say this Holy Spirit is none else but Gabriel, because of two things. Holy, because of his position of being the ambassador or appointee of God to his prophets, because of that message, and the Spirit, because he's a spirit, all angels are the spirit and the invisible, therefore we say angel of the brain is the Holy Spirit. You want us to discuss this another time? We are available for it. I think this is the, the answer. Acts of the Apostles, I don't want to discuss chapters of the Bible. This is not my topic, I'm sorry. I cannot say that chapter is word of God or not. This was not my topic. We use the verses which conforms or agrees with the verses in, in Quran just to relate, because this dialogue was meant to promote more of a brotherhood, sisterhood, you know, uh, uh, tolerance, rather than, you know, uh, splitting people. So I cannot comment on Acts, only that I know that that is the work of Luke. Luke was a physician, and Luke was not a disciple of Jesus. 
Luke and Mark were not among the twelve. Some say that they might have been among 71, but still it doesn't hold water. We find the ministry of Luke and Mark under Paul after Jesus has been taken up. And this is in the book of Colossians, chapter 4, verse 10. You find Luke as a physician and Mark. So, Acts of the Apostles was written by same Luke who wrote the book of Luke, third book in the New Testament. Thank you. So that should conclude our lecture for tonight. On behalf of the Muslim Students Association, we would like to thank everyone for attending tonight's event. It was an enlightening discourse that shed the light on similarities in both both our great both of our great religions, religious traditions. I want to thank Imam Shafi and everybody here for listening and participating in tonight's event. We will continue this we will continue this forum next semester, so please, if you have any great topic or ideas, please approach one of the board members or email us at msa at unm.edu. And once again, I would like to thank you all for coming out and have a great night. Asalaamu Alaikum. Actually, Imam Shafi wants to say a few more words, so please take your seats back, sorry. No preaching. Uh, I have to apologize to anybody who felt offended I just want to encourage you that we should not live within a, in a box within a box. Let us get out of a smaller box and try to promote this. Islam is not for Arabs, Islam is not for us, Islam is a religion of God. No paying fees and also there is no receiving any money to become a Muslim. Islam is open for everybody. These are not just our campaign, no. But we welcome you to Islam. If you have any question, and even if you don't want to become a Muslim, we have Islamic Center of New Mexico. Come there, ask any question, we are so open. Let us calm down, emotions cannot help us. Next time if you have a talk like this, call me, I will sit and I will listen to you. Sorry if we offended anybody, this is our case. Islam means peace. Therefore, may peace of God be with you. Welcome to Islam, welcome to Islamic Center at Yale. Come anytime, even to attend just the summit. Come by, you will find good sisters who will welcome you. If you are a sister, you will have brothers who are there for me. Thank you very much for your time.